Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today we're going to be doing a fun video showcasing redoing a top and using some new products that I've never used before to do it. So let's go ahead and get started. The products that we're going to be using today are these zebra brushes. These are their top coat brushes. They come in this trio. This one I have used before. These are brand spanking new. I have not used these yet. And we're going to use two out of the three of these in our video. We're going to be doing a wash today and we're going to be top coating by hand, which if you all know me and follow me, you know I don't top coat by hand. So this is going to be a fun experience because I gave that up years ago in exchange for spraying my top coats. But we're gonna do this by hand so that I can show you guys how great these brushes are. Okay, so here we are. Here's our subject for today's video. I've obviously already started it. I have painted it and I started sanding the top last night. Now I still have some sanding to do. I started with 100 grit sandpaper. I'm gonna work up through my grits, 120, 150, and I'll stop at about 180. I think that's plenty fine enough for our paint wash. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then we will start with our paint wash. I get asked lots of questions. Why do I paint it first and sand it later? You know, you don't have to. It's just what I've always done and it works for me. The majority of the work is done. Am I worried about getting my paint wash on my newly painted surface? No, I'm not. As you can see, I paint up and over when it's this style. I painted the lip already. I will go back around. Obviously, I'm gonna get wash on this part of it. I will go back around and do some touch up on this part of the um, piece itself. For me, it's just the way it works best. I don't want to do anything to my tops and then while they're fresh, have to tape them off since I spray. And I would have to do that. So what I always try to do is spray first and then I sand because I get spray up here. Anyway, you see where I'm going yeah. with that. Because this is a little bit about process and a little about product, I wanna talk about this top. As I mentioned earlier, I did sand this, but it's nowhere near ready for a wash. First of all, it's too rough. Second of all, you can see I still have finish left behind. So I, the key when you're trying to get a beautiful wash or stain for that matter because they're both sheer is to make sure that your surface is ready to go this is not ready to go all i've done so far is just get all of the old yucky finish off now i need to perfect it and make it really ready so that's the first step before we wash or we stain So some of you might be wondering, why do a paint wash? Why not just stain it? Because with a paint wash, for one, it dries a lot faster. For two, there's a little bit more color flexibility. And for three, I just love them. So the next question, why don't you just top coat it? It's beautiful and it is. And I actually love the tone and the look that it has right now. But if I were just to go top coat this, the problem is, let me just show you. Okay, so I want to show you a little trick. Water. Water is going to show you, it's going to give you the same look and feel that a top coat is going to give you. So you would get an idea of if you just top coated this over the, the bare wood itself right now, how it's going to look. That's not the color or the tone that I want this to look. It's too orangey for me. So by washing it with a paint wash, and I'm not just talking a white wash color, I'm gonna use two different colors that's gonna keep this light. It alleviates me from bleaching the wood and it gives me the look that I want. And then we'll top coat it. All right, for today's video, I'm gonna stick with my Fusion products. The base is painted in a Fusion color. And although you don't have to, I'm just choosing to, I'm gonna stay with the same line today. So I usually, with my washes, do two different, if not more, sometimes I do three. Today I'm gonna do two, and I think I'm gonna choose cashmere as my lighter one. This color is called cashmere, and this is gonna be my lighter color. I don't go with white. I'm not white washing this. I'm using a color wash is what I like to call it. And the other one is my good old standby, and this is a, it is brown. This is Algonquin. So I'm gonna use these two together to create a beautiful wash on the top. Now it's not gonna be opaque, it's gonna be a wash. So it's going to be very sheer like a stain and it's going to show through that beautiful wood grain. All right, creating a wash is pretty simple. 
I try to make it as simple as possible. I'm not measuring how many you know ounces, I'm just mixing. Um, so what I'm gonna do is take my lighter color here into some water and I just mix it up until I kind of like the consistency. Again, I want this very sheer. I do not want an opaque look. That is good enough for me. Sometimes when we think about things too much, like measurements and how much I should put in, it's just too much. And so I like to try to keep things simple, just adding a little bit of color to my water here. Mixing, making sure you do mix it up so not all your paint settles at the bottom. These are both pretty consistent and I'm happy with that. So that is what we're gonna use. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. Now, I will let you know that the lighter color wash is in my cart. Obviously, I don't have enough hands to hold both, so in case you're wondering, I am doing both colors. It's hard to see on screen the difference in the colors. The other thing I'm doing differently here than I do with most of my washes is I'm using the same brush. I'm literally dipping in each color with the same brush, and normally I use two brushes. So I'm gonna go ahead and start removing my wash with the round sponge, the foam sponge, and I'm looking like it's not removing enough. So I went ahead and grabbed my clean white rags. It's just a box of white rags and I'm wiping off. I really don't want a heavy look to this and I really want the wood grain to show through. So the sponge just wasn't cutting it. Okay, so as you can see, I wiped off with the sponge I started and I didn't like it. So then I transitioned to the paper towels. The sponge wasn't picking up enough and I have to tell you, this is exactly the way I want this to look. So I'm doing one coat and that is the it. The other thing I get asked, oh, don't you get wash on your freshly painted surface? I do, but here's what I'm gonna go do. I'm gonna go get a damp cloth and I'm going to wipe away all of this and then what doesn't get wiped away, I will just touch up really quick with my paint so I went color. ahead and took my wet rag and I just went around. Now you can still see like there's a little bit of residual there, but I didn't want to get too close to my wash and take the chance that I might erase some of what I just put on with my wet rag. So I will go over that when I do my little touch up, but here it is here. This is one wash color and this is what we're gonna stick with because I think it looks fantastic. Sometimes you need to touch up is when I was sanding, I accidentally dipped my sander a little bit and I hit the edge. Um, as you can see, it did pretty well everywhere else, but right here I took a little bit of it, the paint off. So that's another reason why um, sometimes you need to just go to go around with a little touch up brush, but again, not a big deal and I would much rather do that than to freshly stain or wash something and then either have to wait or tape this off which you don't want to do that with anything. Thing I want to let you know is um, using fusion mineral paint has a built-in top coat and does not require an additional top coat. I do not top coat all of my fusion pieces. This is a very light color um, almost like a white. And so I tend not to want to top coat my whites because they can yellow um, my color. So I am going to top coat the entire top before I do my touch up paint on the trim. And the reason why is because Fusion has a very matte like finish and my top coat is satin. So I don't want to have a satin trim and a matte finish paint job on the rest of the piece. So I will top coat the entire piece and then after I'm done, I will go through and I will touch up the trim. We're now ready for our top coat. So we're gonna go ahead and take the next step. I love how the wash came out. We did one pass with both colors using the same brush. So yes, normally if you were going for more of a striped look and less of a blended look, then you would use two brushes. In this case, I did not care about marrying the colors together. That's really what I wanted. And so I used one brush. I'd say about two hours before you go ahead and start your top coat process is more than ample enough time for a single paint okay, wash layer. For today's video, we're just gonna put our top coat into a cup. You can put it into a bowl, you can do it right out of the container if you want. I buy my top coat by the gallon, so my brush is not going to fit in here, and I personally want to, to um, I want to use my filter and strain it anyway. Sometimes, like you can get see the buildup from the uh, the rim here, and if that gets into your top coat, that's just going to be a mess. 
So I'm just gonna go ahead and filter out some of my top coat and put that in there. Let that all run down. Um, and then I do not water down my top coat at all. Uh, you can, but I don't see a need to. You can see how thin the consistency on that top coat is. So I've really never had an issue of needing to thin it. So I don't. Okay, a couple of quick tips before we get started. First thing you wanna do, go with the direction of your grain. Start at one end, go all the way to the end. And then as you come back, overlap that next pass and continue to do that same sweeping motion. Pressure, don't put too much pressure on your brush. You're not trying to push the product in, you're trying to lay it down on top of. The other thing to keep in mind is if you see a dry spot halfway through, don't go back and try to rework that. Just know you'll get that on your next coat. Typically, we do three coats on a top of a piece. Then you wanna stop. Too many more four, five, six coats people try to put on thinking they're gonna build up that durability. First of all, you're gonna have to wait an awful long time in between to make sure each of those dries. Second of all, too much can cause blushing or clouding. So you don't want to see that start to happen and that can happen if you layer up too much of your top coat. Now I'm going with a satin sheen. That is my go-to. I always use satin. Um, durability in top coats starts with flat, satin, semi-gloss, and gloss. And I'm doing this because the higher you go in sheen, the higher the durability you have. So if you like a very matte finish, what I would suggest doing is starting with a higher sheen and ending with your matte sheen because you will be building that durability. And I get asked that all the time, can I layer different sheens of top coat? And you absolutely can. I would not mix them, but you can layer them. Okay, so I tried to get different camera angles there so you guys could really try to see. It's hard when you're top coating a light color like this to really see. But this is a perfect example here. As you can see, that spot right there is dry. And I didn't go back over it with my brush because I don't wanna cause any inconsistencies in my finish. I don't wanna build up and I don't wanna drag. So I'm gonna let that go and I'll catch that on my next go round of my top coat. But so far so good, as you can see, it's obviously wet, it is drying, it does set pretty quick. So, recoat time is gonna depend on the top coat product that you're using. I would say to be safe, go with about an hour. Some of these will be ready in 30 minutes, some of them will be ready even sooner depending on your climate. Right now it's kind of a cool day here, there's a lot of moisture in the air, so I'm gonna give this a good hour. The other thing to keep in mind is when you're doing this, um, you will notice with water-based top coat, it raises the grain and it may not be as smooth. You can definitely knock that down and sand in between coats and I'll show you what I use. Also, just so you know, a little tip, you do not have to wash your brush in between coats if you don't want to. I like to wrap mine up in a little saran wrap and I'm doing the same here for my top coat since it's not in a container that's sealed and I don't want to leave it, you know, out in the air exposed. Okay, two big tips, one I've already mentioned. But when you're top coating by hand, most importantly, don't overwork it. This is dry. I'm going to show you all the spots I missed, but I'm going to pick up on my next coat. And the other very important tip is wait for it to totally dry before you go in with your next coat. Because if you do not, you're going to drag and pull up that wet first coat when you go to put on your second one. So just make sure you give it ample dry time. Plus, if you're going to sand in between coats then and it's wet or damp or tacky in certain areas, you're going to make a mess. So I like to use quadruple zero steel wool to sand in between my coats. Now, there's different schools of thought. There's different ideas. There's different products that you can use. 
I personally do not use sandpaper. I do not want to scratch my surface whatsoever. This is not going to etch or scratch my surface. All this is going to do is get out any roughness from the raising of the grain with the water-based product, or if anything might have flown into my top coat like lint or fuzz or a bug, this will get it out without breaking through and sanding through, leaving marks on your piece. Okay, so I've gone ahead and stuffed up my entire surface with my steel wool. I'm gonna go ahead and use a tack cloth. Now, what I will tell you is, when using a tack cloth, these do have oils in them, so you don't wanna push. You just wanna go ahead and lightly sweep. That's all you're doing. You're barely, barely applying pressure to your piece. And see what I'm picking up? That's the steel wool that you're seeing. So again, you're just gonna sweep really lightly literally not even putting a lot of pressure on there because you don't want to push any of those tack cloth oils into your surface. So here's our second coat all wet. We will wait to see how that dries, but I'm very hopeful. I'm thinking it's looking fantastic. I'm loving the color. So as you can see, before we did our top coat, that wash kind of made it look a tad bit dull, a little bit cloudy. But once we put our top coat on, it brings out the richness of that wood grain and the true color of its naturalness, but it doesn't make it golden or right, orange. So this is the second top coat application. I'm trying to show you at an angle so you can see with the light and catch a really good sheen there, as well as see there are no brush strokes. I attribute that to a few things. One, practice makes perfect. I've been doing this for a long time. Two, a good top coat product. And three, a good top coat brush. I'm gonna get in really close so you can really see no brush strokes. It has come out just beautiful. I'm super happy with that. And as you can see, I picked up any of those dry spots on that second coat. So now I'll do my final and third coat and we will be right done. And that is it. We are at the end of the video. I hope this video was helpful for you. I love not only showing you new processes, but also new products because finding the right product sometimes is the biggest part of the job. And I love these zebra brushes. Now you all know I do spray my top coats like 99% of the time, but this is a great alternative. As a matter of fact, the other day, that's why I busted out the three inch before the video was because I didn't feel like loading up my sprayer and cleaning my sprayer and doing all the things. And having a fantastic top coat brush is key to having a fantastic end result. Also, Zebra has been kind enough to give me a discount code. So if you guys go ahead up until May 15th, this discount code is good. Go order your Top Coat Trio brush set because I don't think you'll regret it. It's a great price point, plus you get the discount. Thank you so much for watching today and thank you for being subscribers. If you aren't subscribed, make sure you go hit that subscription button as well as the post notification bell so that you know when all of my latest videos were released. Subscribing to my channel helps keep my channel going, keeps me doing what I'm doing and keeps me supported. I so appreciate you guys. One last thing to mention, my membership group is open. If you want to know what that's all about, go here and check it out. It's called The Barnyard. It's a fantastic group for creatives. We meet once a week with lives. We have guest speakers. There's giveaways within the group. Um, you get to be a part of a creative group, bounce ideas, share your successes, share your failures, ask questions. It's a fantastic way to connect with other like-minded people. So go check it out. Thanks, you guys, and I will catch you on the next video.